It's Friday afternoon. Glad you're with us. I'm Stephen Holt. And I'm Natalie Pascarella. Let's start with New Jersey's new plan for reopening school this fall. Governor Murphy says school will be open, but it looks like there will be a hybrid of in person and remote learning. Faculty and staff must wear their face coverings, and students will too if they cannot maintain social distancing. Let's get out to News 4's Brian Thompson live in Long Branch with the governor's guidance. Brian, of course, you have reaction also from parents and kids. Oh, yeah, and superintendents and everybody. But here is the whole issue uh, that we're involved with here. There will be in classroom learning and teaching, but it will vary by district. So, what happens here in Long Branch could be different from what happens next door in uh, Monmouth Beach or in Ocean Township or in Ocean Port or in Newark or Jersey City or Hoboken or anywhere. They can all be different as long as they offer some. Classroom teaching, maybe completely. The issue here flexibility is a key. We have every expectation that our kids will return to their schools come, come September. Governor Murphy on the future of schools across the state. The announcement so many kids okay, so actually wanted to hear this summer. I like to stay in my classroom and see all my friends and my teachers. You missed that? So you want to go back to class this fall? Yes. The plan must include at least some classroom teaching, daily COVID screenings, mask requirements for teachers and staff, while students should be encouraged to wear masks. Except here in Long Branch, where deep cleaning is underway all summer, masks will be required for returning students, even though the superintendent hasn't decided yet how many in-classroom school days there will be. I think where it's going to actually continue to look at the data and science right up to mid to late August. But Salvatore did say classrooms will be equipped with TV screens for both students and teachers who may not feel safe in coming back in person. One big challenge will be serving breakfast and lunch despite the size of this cafeteria. The governor's plan suggests they be staggered along with recess, but there will be no buffet-style self-service. And on buses, if social distancing can't be kept, then students must wear masks. As for athletics, still no decision. And that's fine with Marisol Mendoza. Using the locker rooms and all that stuff, is it's complicated, so I don't know about sports. But what you'll see here in Long Branch won't be the same, likely, as in the other 600 or so school districts across the state. Few will be identical. We must take into account the many geographic, demographic, and economic differences which exist among our schools and education communities, which can each vary greatly, even among neighbors. So no one size fits all in the 600 or so school districts in New Jersey, but there's a huge asterisk here. And that is if the pandemic comes roaring back, the governor says school systems must be prepared to return to 100% remote telelearning if that happens. Live in Long Branch, Brian Thompson, News 4 New York. Yeah, Brian, now we've got to be ready for anything. Thanks so much for all that new info. Well, the city is now just nine days away from phase three of reopening, and today Mayor de Blasio laid out his plan. Here's what gets back to business on July 6th. Indoor dining, personal care services like your nail salons, spas, tattoo parlors, outdoor sports, and dog runs. And the mayor also announced a new plan today to expand outdoor dining. It lets the restaurants take over entire blocks through the city's open streets program. And News 4's Chris Corioso is live in Harlem to explain this for us. Hey, Chris. Well, this is a good example of utilizing that street space. These are four dining booths that are out in the parking lane of the streets. This is West 114th Street. It is a part of the city's open streets plan. And in the coming weeks, you are going to see restaurants encroach even further out into the street. This one making every effort to let the dining public know it's safe. They've even got this plexiglass here. Uh, they are looking forward to indoor dining, but this weekend it's still all about outdoor dining. Harlem restaurants getting ready for outdoor dining this weekend and now thinking about filling seats inside starting the second week of July. With indoor dining at 50% capacity. At his Friday briefing, Mayor de Blasio confirmed the city is on track for phase three reopening to begin Monday, July 6th. That will mean indoor dining can resume physically distanced at half capacity. It's really important for us now to start to map out 
what's going to happen indoors. Restaurant owner Melba Wilson says her sidewalk and street tables have so far been thriving. Business is up 40% from before the pandemic in early March. This is a comfort food restaurant, and Melba says the business came back because customers know they are being careful. The people definitely feel safe here, but they also feel comfort. And comfort is everything. Comfort is so much more than a type of food that we provide. It's also the environment. Also poised to reopen in phase three, nail salons and tattoo parlors. The head of the state's Korean American Nail Association tells News 4 they have more than a thousand members ready with masks and thermometers to take temperatures of every client and worker. All customers must put on mask when they enter the salon. When you enter the salon, everyone temperature will be checked. Another important point about the nail salons and tattoo parlors, you are not going to be able to go and sit in any sort of waiting room. It's important to make an appointment ahead of time. Some good news here, especially at Melba's restaurant. They say with the outdoor dining, they've been able to hire back 60% of their staff. They're hoping the upcoming indoor dining is going to allow them to bring back even more. For now, reporting live in Harlem, Chris Glorioso, News 4, New York. All right, looks like some good food behind you there, Chris. Appreciate it. Upstate New York is taking another big step forward today. Five regions are now in the fourth and final phase of reopening. That includes the Finger Lakes, Central New York, North Country, Mohawk Valley, and the Southern Tier. Phase four allows for low risk indoor activities, things like museums and zoos, outdoors well. Uh, but malls, movie theaters, and gyms, those are not on the list, those are still on hold. Has been information that uh, those situations have created issues in other states. The issue they're looking at is, are these air conditioning systems recirculating the virus? So get this, the Department of Health says it's now looking into potential air filters that could help those gyms reopen. Governor Cuomo also said it looks unlikely that the state fair will happen in Syracuse this summer, but he plans to make a decision on whether or not to cancel the fair in the next couple weeks. And Stefan, as the tri-state tri keeps taking big steps forward, it is a different story across the country, especially in Texas and Florida. That's where cases are surging so dangerously that the governors are rolling back reopening to stop the spread. Now, both states ordered the bars to shut down today, and it comes as Florida just shattered its previous record for new cases. And as the White House Coronavirus Task Force held its first briefing in nearly two months to address the rising cases. Here's News 4's Ray Vieta. This afternoon, the vice president touting the work of the coronavirus task force. As we stand here today, all 50 states and territories across this country are, are opening up safely and responsibly. But there was no avoiding the fact that cases in the U.S. are hitting record highs. The truth is we did slow the spread. We flattened the curve. We were able to stand up the resources and the capacities in our health care system. The challenges are immense, with some states now rolling back their openings. Florida and Texas hit the hardest, both states now closing bars to stop people from gathering. In Houston, the mayor calling the growing infection rate a full-blown crisis. The ICU capacity in the nation's fourth largest city is at 100 percent. One in four of those patients has COVID-19. The numbers are jumping exponentially and rising fast, and we are quickly moving in the wrong direction. In Florida, the cases spiking among young people. Mask requirements controversial across the state. I don't think that's going to stop you from getting any type of sickness. This is the way that we all can be protected. Arizona is another hot spot. The governor asking people to stay home. 3,000 new cases reported there on Wednesday alone. 88% of the ICU beds now full. And as positive an experience we can try to make for each other, at some point, uh, that there, there's a tipping point, and we're hoping we don't go over the edge. Say this is Tinder waiting to explode, but I'm thinking that some of that has already been lit, and that is concerning. Vice President Pence today defending the recent rally for President Trump in Phoenix, where around 3,000 attendees packed a megachurch, many of them not wearing masks. Freedom of speech and the right to peaceably assemble is enshrined in the Constitution of the United States. Uh, and even in a health crisis, the American people don't forfeit our constitutional rights. The vice president and members of the task force now preparing to visit Texas, Arizona, and Florida. Meanwhile, Dr. Anthony Fauci warning others this surge in the Sun Belt could have implications around the country. Even though they've done well, they may have gotten hit badly like New York and then came down, or they may not have gotten hit badly at all. They are vulnerable. 
Ray Vieta, News 4, New York. While Wall Street is reacting, let's take a look. Stocks sliding over concerns about the country's economic recovery. A live look at the big board here. You see the Dow down more than 700 points right now, Stefan. We just found out this afternoon that President Trump has decided to cancel his trip to his golf club in Bedminster, New Jersey. Uh, the White House now saying the cancellation has nothing to do with that state order requiring quarantine for anyone who has visited uh, coronavirus hotspots. President, as you remember, was in Arizona this week, which is on that travel advisory list. New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy said the quarantine order would not have applied to the president. That's because technically he's considered an essential worker.